Hi, Busho again. Today I'm going to show you how to bleed the cooling system after any cooling system repairs have been performed. After you perform any type of maintenance to the system, such as removing or replacing a hose or draining the system, you'll introduce air. And this air has to be purged in order for the cooling system to operate properly. Failure to do this can lead to engine overheating after the repairs have been completed and the system has been refilled. Before we begin, make sure that the fan switch is turned off and that the temperature dial is turned to the full hot position. This is so we have full coolant flow through the heater core. If your vehicle is equipped with a coolant bleeder valve, you want to open it. If you don't have a bleeder valve, ignore this step and proceed directly to filling the radiator with coolant. Without a bleeder, you'll have to bleed more air out with the engine running. These are general guidelines that apply to most vehicles. If your service manual specifies a bleeding procedure that differs, be sure to follow it. This 97 Accord has a bleeder right there. On the lower radiator hose, back here, you have your bleed valve right over here. Right there. Okay, so I'm just going to get a 12 millimeter wrench and loosen that up. Okay. Now here's a tool I highly recommend. It's called a spill-free funnel. It's a funnel that sits on top of the radiator filler neck and prevents coolant from gushing out during the bleeding process. On vehicles with a bleeder, the radiator will fill with minimal effort, as air will be displaced by the coolant through the bleed valve. If you don't have a bleeder, you'll need to fill the funnel and wait for the coolant level to drop as the air bubbles escape. This process will take a bit longer, but keep filling until the level in the funnel stops dropping. For this Honda, it's part C. Look for the matching plastic piece, C, that fits into the funnel. Fit it like that. Okay. Let's take it and install it like a rad cap. Push it on, give it a twist. That's locked in place. Look at your funnel, stick it on top. And when you're done, if you're thinking about, oh, what's going to happen to the extra coolant left in the funnel itself, Simply, you just take this plug here, stick it in there, pull it off, and then you could drain this into your coolant drain pan. I'm using the pre-mixed stuff because I just find it easier. You don't have to mess around looking for distilled water. And by the way, if you do use the stuff you have to mix, do not use tap water. Make sure you go get distilled water. It's very important. Never use tap water in the cooling system. Tap water contains minerals, which will form mineral deposits in the radiator, block, and cylinder head. These deposits will affect heat transfer from the coolant to the metal of the radiator, and from the metal to the coolant in the cylinder head and engine block. These deposits will reduce cooling system performance, and if they get bad enough, can cause overheating. Just going to start filling it. Starting to sputter a bit. And right there, when you have a nice solid stream like that, close the bleeder off. Be very careful with that bleeder. Don't over tighten it, just snug it up. If you over tighten it, you can crack the aluminum inlet housing. 
Then refill the funnel so you have a tiny reserve of coolant inside. That's enough. see it. So you have your max mark, you have your min mark. That's about good slightly above the min mark, good enough. You never want to fill it past the max mark. Some vehicles will have a cold and hot mark instead. In that case, fill it up to the cold mark. Drop it back in there. Put the hose back in. Make sure it's in that line there. In that guide. Snuck up. Now there are two things I could do to warm the vehicle up. I could go in the vehicle and hold the gas pedal, or I could hold the throttle open with this trick. I'm going to push down on the throttle, get my Unilos vice grips, put them on this stop screw right here, and by moving the vice grips up and down, I can control the position of the throttle. When I have it where I want it, just clamp down, don't need to clamp down too hard, loosen the adjusting screw. And that's it. That'll hold the throttle open for me, and I can warm up the vehicle very quickly. Okay, now that the vehicle's been filled with cool, and I can start it up. Now, just hold the engine at about 2,500 RPM until the cooling fans come on. Keep an eye on the coolant level in the funnel. If it drops to the radiator filler neck, refill it. You'll have to worry about refilling it more with the engine running on the bleederless systems because there's a lot more air that's going to be coming out when the engine's running. just finished coming on. The coolant levels above the filler neck. Plug. Of There'll always be a bit of residual cooling in the cap, so you can nice wrap it up with your hands. Cap on. Then go inside the vehicle and check the temperature gauge, and it's right where it needs to be. Take the vehicle out for a short drive, bring it back, and shut it down. After the engine cools down, recheck the overflow bottle. It's normal for it to drop a bit as more air bleeds out of the system. Refill it between the min and max marks, and you're done.